Thank you. I was about to do something that I hate when other people do, when people do in their podcasts, which is to say I don't know something when I could just pause, Google it, and then have some knowledge of that thing. So, um, but I paused and now I know a little bit. Uh, so the line is, um, from Ibiza to the Norfolk Broads, um, Ibiza is, so the, the Meissner Million hordes from Ibiza to the Norfolk Broads. Um, I'm guessing that's kind of a tourist thing because I know that Ibiza, both um, then and now, was a popular um, Spanish beach vacation spot for tourism. Um, obviously, you don't get a lot of beaches in uh, England, at least not ones that you want to go uh, laying out in the sun the way you would in the Mediterranean, and, um, you know, Spain and the Mediterranean, Spain is close, the Mediterranean isn't that far, uh, so Ibiza is a popular vacation spot, and Norfolk Broads is a, a, a wetland, a national park in England, I have found, and there appears to be tourism related to that, so that could all be tourism, um, the next line I'm not sure about. Uh, rule, but rule Britannia is out of bounds to my mother, my dog, and the clowns. I really have no idea about that. I know that David Bowie had a mother. I know that he um, was a clown at some t at various points. He did studied mime. He did makeup um, and um, that kind of thing. Um, I don't know if he ever had a dog, or if it's just there for scansion. Um, let's get back to the words. But the film is a saddening bore, because I wrote it ten times or more. Here we have I for the first time. Uh, this could be the narrator, singer, standing in for Bowie, um, saying that he wrote it ten times before. We could be in the girl's mindset now. From her standpoint, before she says that she's lived it ten times or more, now she's written it ten times or more. Um, it's kind of both. I love how nothing in this song, I think however much I could uh, interpret it, I wouldn't be able to pin it down. Like, do I think that she's actually at the movie theater? Yes and no. Do I think that she's autistic? I feel that she is, but there's nothing that I can point to that says, yes, here she is. She meets the, you know, this many points in the DSM criteria for autism. You know, it's that's my impression of her. I feel even if she's not, um, wouldn't pass the test for aut, pass the test. It's because, uh, because that's success. When you reach autism, that is success. It's like the AP tests, LSAT, you know, um, but, so even if she doesn't pass the test to be, uh, to have the characteristics to justify a diagnosis of autism, um, we haven't heard her say anything. She seems mousy. She's withdrawn. You know, it, it works for me. Um, cause I wrote it 10 times or more. It's about to be writ again. As I ask you to focus on Again, that I, we don't know, is it Bowie's stand-in? Is it her? Is she Bowie's stand-in in this story? Um, um, I mean, he, she could be the little girl with the mousy hair in this um, story, going to the, a movie in pre-war London. Um, you know, writers switch genders on characters they're writing sometimes, and he certainly played with gender and sexuality and whatnot. Um, as I ask you to focus on, once again, sailors fighting in the dance hall, or look at those cavemen go. And um, the rest of the words um, are the same as they were the first time. Um, as I ask you to focus on sailors fighting in the dance hall, oh man, look at those cavemen go. It's the freakiest show. Take a look at the lawman beating up the wrong guy. Oh man, wonder if he'll ever know. He's in the best-selling show, Is There Life on Mars? And so that is um, 
what I have to say about those lyrics for now. Um, it's interesting, just there are little things like, um, she could spit in the eyes of fools. Three songs before this on Hunky Dory, the um, opening track changes, uh, talks about those children that you spit on. Um, the idea that she's looking at them calling them caveman really, to me, goes with the idea I will explore when I talk about Oh You Pretty Things, which is um, the most problematic David Bowie song I know lyrically because it is largely inspired by um, 19th century novel um, Vril or The Coming Race by Edward Bulwer Lytton, and it, um, which is about a coming race of supermen who are better than us. And that song um, um, talks about, says uh, um, the children, um, they don't belong to you, they're a part of the coming race. And um, gotta make way for the homo superior is a song inspired by a novel about a coming race of Superman uh, who are ostensibly white, I would guess. Um, that doesn't look so good, but it sort of it ties in here. Um, then again, the same album has an album that talks about Aleister Crowley, and so um, that's probably not, not problematic. Um, Just one one last thought to go along with both of those things that I'll explore later. Um, when you hear, maybe it's more than one last thought, when you hear changes, and just talking about those um, the children that you spit on and, you know, all this, it's like, it really seems to be just about, um, it's 1971. It seems like they're saying, look, you know, old people, your baby when we're children are, you know, making their own new world. Um, they understand what they're going through, um, and you would just spit on them. But then there are things like, or he says, come on, you rock and rollers. And it's like, is he referring to rock and rollers being the ones who have these children who are somehow changing? Um, are the rock and rollers the, the hippie generation or somehow um, their par the parents and there's a generation past that, you know, sort of beyond the hippies. And because um, then in uh, Oh You Pretty Things, he talks about, um, you know, you pretty things, you're driving your mamas and papas insane. And you could just say like, yeah, these pretty, you know, the high school, the college age, you know, the young people that we uh, talk, talked about in Changes are driving their mamas and papas insane. But uh, the mamas and the papas, it was also a big um, 60s pop rock group um, starting in the 60s, still active around then. And so it just makes it sort of wonder, like, are these young people who are, like, driving you know, the mamas and papas generation, um, insane with however they were different. Um, and I will have more about both of those things to say, um, probably sometime soon. If you're still watching, then thanks.